Hi and welcome to my playhouse and today we are here at Eras ECS in Denmark a distributor that um, well supplies a lot of hardware here in Denmark it's a semi worldwide distributor and I can assure you that I get a lot of stuff from Eras ECS where I work I order a lot of hardware and much of it comes from Eros but they're also nice enough to let me stop by and have a look at some of the latest and the greatest Lenovo hardware and right down here whee, we have something that we haven't seen before it's kind of heavy <laughs> this is an AMD server this is the Lenovo SR635 it's a one socket server it's a 1U server but it's for an AMD CPU this one has the release buttons from the rack they all have that then it has hard drives 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 so that's 10 hard drives on the front of this 1U server then over here it has an on off button that is kind of in there you need to have a little bit of a nail or pointy finger to get in there then it has the ID that lights up blue on the front and the back and there are some LEDs that shows you if the server is on and if it's doing okay we have a couple of USB ports here blue ones meaning that these are USB 3 connections it does not have the screen connection but there is room for it so so that is probably an option for this server that you can get that on the front and the second release button is there so it has room for the stuff here if you need that serial number is over here it could be the password for the XCC on the back here we have a PCI Express port here and we have the OCP down there and that's the card that you can take out if they oh, hadn't tightened it that much so we're gonna cheat a little bit and we're gonna untighten that's not gonna work and we need to see that how that comes out don't you agree? I knew you would so OCP card uh, two connections not entirely sure what this card is but it's a couple of SFPs so 10 or 25 gigabits is my best estimated guess pretty smart you can take that out while the server is running and you can replace it for another one without too much hassle of course in this case when there is nothing else in the server uh, it would uh, wouldn't make much sense now we better tighten it to about the same level as before then we have the management port well it looks like we have an LED there there's an exclamation mark so that's probably if there's something wrong with the server it will be lighting up here something in there that would make sense it's often a big help if you have a rack full of especially one u servers and finding the right server on the back of the rack when you have figured out which one it is on the front of the rack well if you haven't seen the numbers on the side of the rack you uh, you have to count and in a big modern rack there can be 40 plus servers of these and yeah it's a lot easier if it lights up blue or if it has an exclamation mark that there's something wrong here this port is for the management uh, the XCC then we have that VGA connection that was missing on the front so there's at least one on the back there is two USB connections USB 3 connections and there is a serial connection there is also room up here for another PCI Express I don't think the riser cards is in there it would look different if it was then we have the NMI the kind of the reset button and lastly we have two of Lenovo's standard 750 power supplies very nice um, I have looked in here so the cover is not entirely straight on that's my fault on the top of the server there is some more help here um, there is a bit of information you can usually find that this this server is from 2019 so it has been um, in the warehouse for quite a while <laughs> I think it's the model that is from 2019 um, there's a bit of help to how to get this mounted in the rack when you have the rails you have to, to slide the server in and pop it in like that and they show that there is something about the cables if you want to remove the, the front IO model they help you there there's the LEDs that is located here what does they mean 
it has the power LED, it has the network activity LED, ID button LED and the system error LED, that orange thing. So it says here that if you have purchased service for the Lenovo server, you, you need to activate it. That is required. <laughs> then there's the explanation on top of what everything is in the server. Here they have made a big area where you can see how the, the SuperCap M.2 and internal risers are mounted in the server. Then there's an overview of the system board, which is very helpful with these servers. There is usually a lot of connections in there and you have to pop in stuff in the right connections. This has a one CPU, so we're gonna go in and count how many memory slots are in there. But I can kind of see that it says 16. So I guess that eight and eight uh, memory slots so different configurations for the rear you can um, get some options where you can put some hard drives in the back of the server and you can combine that with different riser cards and that is explained here some help to uh, getting the CPU in and out and here is the order of how to put in the dims so if you just have one dim you put it in slot number three if you have two slot three and slot one if you have three slot three one fourteen and so forth but let's go inside and see what it looks like let's take the cover off they were so nice to have this sitting i didn't have to unwrap it or anything a customer has ordered three of these and they left the last one on the table for me to look at so here is the server and we can see that the front here oh i forgot to show that it had discs why didn't we show that it has a couple of what is this this uh, sata drives so it's nothing special it's a couple of sata drives ssds and they are 240 gigabytes so probably a redundant boot solution i would um, i would expect that there is two in there and there is room for six more there is missing the back plane for the last two up here then we have the fan assembly these small tiny ones hot pluggable fans and there's a fan on on each side and yeah they are usually a bit more noisy than the the two u servers oh what did i do now yeah. okay and there is a piece of plastic here an air thing that will direct the air the right way around the server so that you get the cooling where you need it Oh yeah, there is all of those plugs that I talked about. In these newer servers, there's always a lot of connections for the PCI Express connections to go in the front or in the back for the NVMe drives. Probably not a good idea to unscrew the heatsink on this new server that is going out to a customer, but I found the paperwork for it. And in this server, it is occupied with the AMD EPIC 7702P CPU. And this is a um, 64 core CPU with 128 frets. So it's a beast debugger. It uh, turbo boosts up to 3.35 uh, gigahertz and it has a normal clock speed of 2 gigahertz. It um, has 256 megabytes of third level cache and a TDP of 200 watts. Yeah, very powerful electric heater. The CPU can handle that 3200 MHz RAM and it uses PCI Express version 4. Compared to the Intel scalable CPUs, this CPU has twice the amount of PCI lanes. It has no less than 128 PCI lanes, where the scalable only has 64. Well, only and only. 64 is still a lot of PCI lanes, uh, probably more than you need in a 1U server at least. But with this CPU, you have the same amount of PCI lanes as you have with the Intel CN scalable version 3. Uh, so with two CPUs, so pretty nice. The 16 blocks of memory here, um, the server supports up to two terabytes of RAM. That is with 128 gigabyte blocks. And they are not really affordable. I wouldn't call them that. They are, um, they're expensive, so. Uh, yeah, two terabytes of RAM, if you want to put that in there, if you want that, the server becomes really expensive. Where the second CPU could have gone, they have kind of put a, a kind of a, uh, <laughs> a RAID controller in here, together with some very beefy cables that needs to uh, be pulled down. 
This rate controller is just for the two drives up in front of the server and the paperweight says that this is an uh, rate 738i, one gigabytes of cache and it's a PCI Express now, yeah, obviously and it uses 12 gigabits connections up to the hot drives. The slot up there is mostly just for the rate controller. Down here we have room for for PCI Express ports. There's room for a riser card here that will go hmm, that way. That would be my best guess. Maybe it can go both ways. Uh, but they have put a riser card in here so we can have that out. Check that out. And we have a Mm, I would expect that this is a fiber optic HBA for SAN. Mm, looks like it. I'm not totally sure about that. They're not very, not very good at labeling that stuff. But it's on top of the OCP, that uh, network card, and they have some plastic to make sure that it gets a bit of air. So there's like the air comes and it goes through that network card, and yeah. 10 or 25 gigabit network connections can be toasty so nice of them weird thing that we had the riser card connection up here but well there wasn't room here let's take in so riser card one goes here riser card two goes over here and they have kind of the same design as we saw on the sr650 version 2 with these very small connections but there is no power connections on this one there is power connections down on the system board there's a beefy power connection here and another one there so it is possible oh, and there's one here and multiple over here so there's a lot of internal power available not sure what that would all be used for but well it's there up here they also the fan assembly here all the fans it has its own pcb that is then connected with a wire to the main motherboard so instead of having the fan assembly on the motherboard, which is the usual thing, they have decided to put that as a separate thing. So maybe there is more options available here. Maybe you can buy the server with all the disk options and they need to move that forth or back or do something else with, with the fan assembly here. A bit weird, they have like three big connections here for power, which goes towards the back plane here. So to power the hard drives, I would be guessing but they're actually not using them they're using a connection from here and that goes around the back and down to here instead of just over there that is kind of a weird option i think the system board is not really that big it covers this area here and is not much bigger than a system board in a normal hmm, workstation or pc usually it's it takes up a lot more space in the server Maybe not exactly where the power supplies are, but well, sometimes. The server can handle up to 16 2.5 inch hard drives. That probably means that there's an option for this one has 10 and thing, and then you can put some in the back. Uh, if you are looking at this server and um, want to see more of the possibilities and the exact fact on what you can put in this and what it can do, what CPU it can handle, and how much RAM and so on and so forth, how to configure the drives. I really recommend Lenovo Press. If you do a Google search on Lenovo and SR635, I will bet you that Lenovo Press is one of the search results that pop up. If you go in there, you have a nice list over on this side, different areas, there's RAM, processor features, a lot of different areas. And if you click it, you can see internal storage, you can see the network cards that are available, you can see rate controllers, you can see processors, you can, you can see the different power supplies that are available, all the hard drives that you can get, M.2s, SAS, SATA, U2, if there is other fans available, so on and so forth. So Lenovo has two of these servers. This one is the SR635. It has one AMD CPU. There is also the Lenovo SR645 and that has two AMD CPUs. The same thing goes with the two U servers. There's the SR655 and the SR665. The 55 is in a one CPU configuration 
and the 65 is in a 2 CPU configuration. So if you watch my videos, it will come as no surprise to you that I'm a big Lenovo fan. And I'm very happy that I can come out here and visit Era CCS and see the latest and the greatest. This is not the latest server anymore. Well, it kind of is on the AMD side. They haven't released a version 2 yet, but I'm sure it's very near. Do go check out Lenovo Press and check out these awesome servers. And there is a good lineup and uh, tons of information. And thank you to Eras ECS for letting me show you this. Thank you very much for watching my videos. Do subscribe to my channel so you can see me again. And have a really nice day. Bye bye.